Radiant team ban. And we're back for game number two of this best of three. Navi taking on QPAD in our opening match of the Curse of Invitational sponsored by Alienware. And yeah, game one kind of came and went pretty quick. Navi hanging a 12 minute goose egg on QPAD, getting past them without giving up a single kill. And things just spiraled completely out of control on the back of a Skywrath Mage pickup. Dindy doing a great job out of mid. And really, I was talking with the Chad a little bit, and I'll let my co caster Merlini, who will be joining me for the extent of this tournament experience band on this. We talked about the Druid and Skywrath both being susceptible to pressure out of mid. That's really how you want to shut both of those heroes down. The difference in the game, more or less, was that one team prioritized that and the other didn't. Na'Vi able to take the Druid down over and over, and we just did not see Dindy under any pressure at all on that Skywrath Mage. Yep, and early movement on the map is what differentiates like really good teams from just good teams. And we see Na'Vi, uh, mostly just Puppy and Kuro, just move around the map and take, pretty much take control of like 75% of uh, of the map. And they just they just absolutely wrecked Sing in middle as well as select on bottom. And Cupa was in, unable to respond. And we really need to see some more movement out of them if they want to compete against Na'Vi. Talking about select a little bit, I actually want to say, I was thinking about this earlier. I'm almost positive. I mean, you know, and you understand this as well as anyone. Whenever you broadcast as much as we do, sometimes the games start to run together. But I'm almost positive one of the last times you and I were on the horn together to cast a game was QPAD. I can't remember who they were taking on. I think it was in the lower bracket of the G1 Western Qualies. And it seems to me we talked a bit about how much Select was struggling on Darkseer then. I mean, and you know, and not to say anything about Select as a player, very talented guy, has been all around the world in esports from Dota all the way to StarCraft and back and all that fun stuff. But really, he just, I mean, when you pick a Darkseer, that Darkseer is so good and is still valued so highly by so many teams because of what he can contribute, not just in terms of team fight, but in the laning phase as well. And in a one on one situation, to have him drop as much as he did, it's just a really big liability that QPAB was unable to overcome, especially when they didn't prioritize taking down the Skywrath Mage at all. And QPAB going to go with a similar look. Clockwork and Nyx Assassin going to be joining Matt. Magnus, very strong front three coming out from them. A lot of team fight already built in. Navi's picked up the Keeper of the Light. They've got a Prophet, so they're going to have plenty of global presence between Keeper of the Light's ultimate and Nature's Prophet's teleport. And Alchemist going to go ahead and bring things up. And I can tell you, I was actually watching Puppy play earlier in a scrim, and uh, he was running on Alchemist. So don't know that he'll be playing the Alchemist, but Navi certainly does like the hero. Yep, I love Alchemist as a hero. I think he's really, really good. His unstable concoction is... Very, very good early game, late game, as long as you don't stun yourself. But that shouldn't happen if you have pretty good coordination with your team. Mm -hmm. And he's one of the best farmers in the game with Grievous Greed and incredibly hard to kill uh, with his ultimate. If Troll ever gets imported, it is a nightmare to behold. Alchemist, Chemical Rage, <laughs> and Troll Ultimate. Cannot wait. Yeah, and I, there's a lot of talk about that. We just got to see in game one a hero, and you you touched on it briefly about how we're beginning to see heroes enter the captain's mode pool much, much quicker than we did six months ago. And Troll's one of those heroes. I'm like you. I can't wait to see him go in because I think he's going to be a situational pick, if not a more consistent pick. And Alchemist, one of a number of heroes that can certainly benefit from that. What I like about Navi's lineup so far, though, is with the Keeper of the Light and the Alchemist pickups, very hard Navi to apply pressure to that if they decide to defensively try lane. The offensive try lane is available to them if they really want to go with that, but as always, we'll have to wait and see what their next two picks are going to be. I actually see a Slark banned out by Navi, and that's a little, you know, again, Slark is one of those heroes that I have never seen in competitive play. Talk to me about that Slark ban. Uh, I I think it just might just be a taunt ban, to be honest, because he I don't think he's that good of a hero, especially right. in competitive, when people uh, pick up gem in like 15 to 20 minutes. I mean, if they pick it versus like a Nyx or someone with a Shadow Blade, they're definitely going to take one very early against a Slark. And I don't really think he has any place in competitive play. I could be wrong, but I think there are many other Betty better carries if you want to put him in that role, and many other better like offlane gankers, for example, Bounty Hunter or Clock, if you want to put him in that role too. Uh, for QPAD, their draft looks like they just like really strong heroes. And Magnus, Nyx, and Clockwork are all really strong heroes and generally pretty good in one-on-one -on -one matchups. And it seems like they drafted somewhat for that last game. They had a Darkseer versus a Fury on Darkseer on paper wins that matchup. And I believe the mid matchup, um, Silla Bear versus 
Skywrath, uh, I think Silver should win that matchup. He has a base damage advantage from 1 to 4, and then when he gets Root at level 5, it should be a huge pain in the butt for Skywrath to deal with if he procs. Uh, but it looks like this game will probably see Nyx and Shadow Shaman support a carry that has yet to be selected for their safe lane, and then Magna Solo middle with uh, Clockwork, uh, probably solo off lane. Well, Tusk's going to be picked up by Na'Vi, another hero I have never casted in competitive play. I, I'm, you know, it was kind of the buzz that with, that Dendi was playing on Tusk a lot in his practice matches and on stream and all. So it looks like that might be what we're seeing here. And, you know, whenever it came to the Slark, one reason I went straight to you and just said, talk to me about it before giving an opinion is because I'm of the mind that you are. He's not a hero I really see fitting into a lot of lineups. Just wanted to make sure that I wasn't going to shoot my mouth off. And, wow, we're going to see two Tusk and Skywrath Mage picked up in the exact same game. And yeah, this all of a sudden got very fun. Looks like it's going to be a support Tusk as he's now under control of Kuro. I have tried roaming Tusk before, and it worked out not bad. Like, Frost <laughs> Shards doesn't actually scale that well with right. uh, levels. I mean, the cooldown duration is... Looks like it's reduced by two per level, but... Uh, what's more important is that the ice barrier stays the same at all levels. So he is actually somewhat effective at early levels. It will definitely be a support tusk, as you said, on by Kuro. He already picked up a chicken and observer wards. Anxious to see how this is going to pan itself out. And, you know, looking at the lineup here from QPad, yeah, it's looks like it's going to be pretty standard stuff. They're actually going to be farming the Tinker. Now, now is this going to be... They've got Select on the mag. Sing Sing is on Tinker. Usually you'll see Sing Sing go mid, so not sure exactly which of these heroes is going to be making its way down. Yeah, it looks like Sing Sing will be farming out of the defensive tri-lane, so not a whole lot of surprise there. One problem that I see already with QPad, though, and this is kind of similar to what we saw in Game 1 is they do not have a lineup that can recover very easily. I mean, yes, you know, if Tinker has a bad start, say he's slow to his bots and, you know, he, he dies a couple of times, he can eventually get up boots of travel, start to bounce around and, and pick up and make up some ground and farm. But he's not a hero that's going to scale particularly well into the late game in comparison to an alchemist and uh, the lineup that we already see. And Na'Vi, once again, has a lineup that can apply a lot of pressure. You're going to have all of that damage coming out of Skywrath Mage, the global presence of the Furion. And Alchemist can fight a lot earlier than a lot of carries really can, especially those who scale as well as he does into the late game. The horn sounded, and I kind of look, you know, keeping an eye on these teams, I was wondering if Na'Vi was going to go for anything. Doesn't look like they are. Puppy will chase Waga away, so I'll run through the lineups very quickly. Sing Sing, as mentioned, will be playing on our Tinker. We'll have Mag handled in mid by Select. Struggled on Darkseer in game one. Going to be looking to put together a better performance here in game two. Shadow Shaman going to be handled by many. We're going to have Clockwork played by Waga Mama setting up shop in the offlane. Nyx Assassin going to be handled by JRX on the other side of the river. Puppy, the captain, running on Keeper of the Light. No surprise there. Tusk, the Surprise pick of the day, handled by Kuroki in that support role. Skywrath Mage for the second game in a row will be played in mid by Dindy. Alchemist will be handled by our uh, by Havost and of course Funic playing on our Nature's Prophet. So thinking about this Tusk pick, it actually seems like he will do pretty well versus Clockwork. Usually his method of escape is just a cog and then kill the cog uh, that's leading back to safety. But with the Frost Shards in place, I don't think he'll be able to retreat as easily as one would expect. We can already see Funic is making his way up, so they're going to be playing this ultra defensive. And Sing Sing's actually helping out in the jungle here. So right now, I mean, he's stacking and pulling. He's got a little bit of experience, but not much. Now, this really worries me. I mean, obviously, he can make up some ground using March of the Machines. And I've seen Sing Sing do this a number of times on different heroes. Oh, well, not on different heroes, but in different situations. But again, if they get too far behind in levels, where's their damage? I'm not sure. They really just need <laughs> levels again, just like last game. They have re really level-dependent heroes. Sh Shadow Shaman can't really do that much early. His either shock only hits one target at level one, although it does quite a significant amount of damage for a level one spell. Mm -hmm. And Nyx also needs levels. A little bit unfortunate for seeing that he got the Satyr stack. Uh, Satyrs are very difficult to take out as a jungle tinker. I've actually tried this before, and it's not quite as effective as jungling ancients simply because of the Satyr spawn. Mm -hmm. Well, so far, we can see both teams keeping it pretty calm, at least for the moment. I would imagine Navi's going to go ahead and start to break things down a little bit. I mean, you know, here in mid, Select does have Skewer to rely on to get him to get him out of trouble. But given how many ways Navi has to get on top of him, it worries me that even that might not worry. And, you know, something about Navi's team is they're fairly tanky, at least a couple of them are. Whenever you're talking about the ability for an Alchemist, for example, if he wants to start moving around, he can take some damage. He can tower dive okay once he hits level 6. And, you know, Select is going to be doing fine in terms of CS, but, I mean, looking at the early laning phase here, who do you think is going to come out ahead? 
Uh, it looks like Navi probably will. Um, again, I'm not really liking this Jungle Tinker too much. He's still going to have a really hard time taking this out. Hmm. And the supports on Navi are getting a lot more uh, out of the jungle. So and oh sorry, uh, and one th more thing I wanted to add: Alchemist has already scaled two levels of Grievel's Greed, and I put Alchemist and PL as two of the scariest heroes with free farm. And hmm. I would never try to give Alchemist free farm if I were in charge of a draft. It's just really, really devastating, and you can already see his net worth. It's already at fifteen hundred three minutes into the game. Well, you know, I, I totally agree. And when you look at this lineup, here's the problem. You know, you see, you know, it's obvious to see what QPAD's going for. They've got really good team fight initiation and counter initiation. They have a great ability to start moving around at level six. Once you get Hook on your clockwork, once you have Magnus with his uh, reverse polarity, so on and so forth. But even with that, how do they really look to apply pressure to Na'Vi if Na'Vi just simply plays passively? I mean, when you look at this, they're going to have the counter push from a Keeper of the Light. He's almost level 3, so he's going to have level 2 Chakra Magic very, very soon. They're going to have the spam ability and just the unbelievable power of a Skywrath Mage in terms of the damage he can deal. So the only way you can really engage into him confidently is once you get up some Magic Resist, which is not going to be there early on in the game. And then you're going to have Tusk, who's able to just counter-initiate with the best of them, and the split push of a Prophet if he doesn't want to come to the fight. And, you know, like, if, if Q-Pad had drafted a late-game carry an Annie Mage Avoid, something like that, I could understand, and then they, they would just rely on their ability to take ganks and to take fights on the back of their strengths. But with no real late-game carry and the best hero they have in terms of just pure damage output in the Tinker being as under-leveled as he's going to be, I'm just really curious what the game plan can be here. Oh, yeah. Probably just get Tinker really farmed. He's quite a beast late game if he has Blink and Sheep, but it looks like uh, they're going on Slick right here, so I'll wait to talk about that. Kuro moving through. He's going to use his Snowball, and he has Select's dead. What else can you say? Phonix there basically just got there to, to celebrate. Now we're going to see Sing Sing being pursued out, being forced off of this jungle spot. And Kuro is going to have... Nope, never mind. Thought it was a little longer cooldown or a little shorter cooldown on Ice Shards, but he does manage to make it away. Waga is taking the opportunity to soak up a little bit of experience while we can. And we're going to have a quick pause. We're just about five minutes in. First blood on the board. It belongs to Navi. want to thank each and every one of you for making us a part of your day here on the Curse Invitational, sponsored by Alienware. I'm EC, joined by Merlini. And while we have a minute, Merlini, as you're dropping these knowledge bombs, I'm sure there's a lot of folks who would love to hear more from you. Where can they find you? Uh, you can find me streaming on Twitch. I stream almost every day at twitch.tv slash MerliniDota. I also have a YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter available, also slash MerliniDota. There you go. Especially if you're a new player, not a whole lot of guys better in the business to start following if you want to learn more about the nuts and bolts of Dota, former professional player Merlini. Always a pleasure to have you on the cast, my friend, and have you lend your analytical insights. Yeah, thanks for having me, and I'm really glad to have this opportunity to cast with you. Yeah, it's an exciting time, man. I mean, you know, it's my first, not my first time working with Curse, actually. I did a, a couple of show matches for them a long time ago. But, you know, I hope, you know, this is to me, and, you know, I'm not trying to tell the community what to think or what to feel, but it has to be exciting seeing yet another name enter this realm. You know, Curse, a big name in esports, big name in gaming in general, even if it's not competitive gaming. So I want to thank them and, of course, express my excitement at having them enter this, this uh, side of things and hopefully... This event, on the back of what I'm sure will be success, thanks to all of the support from our viewers, should hopefully be the first of many. Yep, and I'm, I think uh, Valve has just done a really, really good job about promoting Dota 2 and expanding on the competitive scene. We didn't really see this sort of pr promotion and reception in Dota 1, and Dota 2 is, uh, on, by contrast, just very well taken up by the community and by professional uh professional companies like curse we can see nix assassin is level six i mean that's you know if there's any one good thing you could point at it's the fact that qpad does have a nix with a quick six they're gonna have to start putting that to use soon though i mean T sing sing is just hurting right now he's level three and a half you compare that to even puppy puppy he's the same level as puppy and puppy's done nothing but move around the map i mean puppy hasn't even spending all his time nothing and we're gonna see a skewer forced out of select his guy shards did connect from kuro but yeah, this is what you were talking about, that roaming tusk. Yep, and looks like Nyx is trying to look for a gank in middle. He's going up the hill, probably looking for easy fury on kill. And he's going to engage on a Kuro. There's the impale. He used impale before Vendetta, though, so he didn't get the damage from it. Bit of a mechanical mistake and nice carapace. Though now he is locked in with the ice shards from Kuro, though. Can they get there in time? Sprout will be there when they want it. They may not even, yep, they will need it. 
But, oh, there's the, wow, Funic. Oh, he doesn't have a point in a Sprout. I guess it helps if I look at the skills, huh? So that explains why the Sprout never came. Either way, Nick's Assassin does manage to make it away. Yep, he is only level 3 at this point, and not exactly what you would hope for from your jungle Furion, but they did devote a lot of resources on bottom, and he probably would have just died if you tried to come get experience in lane. Down here at bottom, we can see Minnie making his way to 6 as well. He's almost level 5, so... I mean, Q-Pad, yeah, I try not to look at the scoreboard too often before 10 minutes just because so much can change in that time. I'm going to now. The goal's one thing. The experience is actually pretty close to even, and that's really what I wanted to see. The fact that Q-Pad is at least keeping it remotely close plays into what we were talking about. I mean, we can look at the gold and see that obviously Navi is coming out ahead there as uh, the top two farmers on the board are the two you want, Alchemist and the Skywrath Mage. Three after that all belong to QPAD, but the fact that they are not getting completely out-leveled despite things kind of going wrong for them in a couple of spots, that's real important for their viability. Yep, and now they have some decent vision up on the map too. They have uh, wards up here, and but it looks like Navi already has a sentry and a observer in mid in case Nyx decides to make his way mid. And we and can look at Nyx. That little TP thought about. JRX is under cover of Vendetta again, but so far, unable to make much of anything happen. Havost having his way with things. I mean, it's seven and a half minutes in. He almost has 50. Now we're going to have an engagement in mid and select. Going to skewer out of the... Uh, uh, out of the sprout, but tracked down <laughs> by the Arcane Bolt. Came from downtown, so another kill goes the way of Na'Vi. And poor select, man. It seems like, you know, I think we're bad luck for him. Every time we cast him, he just seems to have trouble. Mm -hmm. And attempted kill on Havos on top lane, but unable to uh, follow up with a cog after them pale. And Havos will scoot away with around 200 HP. Has his Midas up, so talking about that big GPM. He is working now on his treads as we see those added to his inventory. But so yeah. far, go ahead. He's going to be scary. Tier 1 should be brought down and will. Puppy was there, unable to get to deny. Now we're going to have shards thrown out. That's going to catch many, but no follow-up as he just didn't have enough help. Dindy, though, has just bottled a haste rune. And he's going to go head hunting. Moving into the Radiant side jungle now. He's got two targets moving under the tower. Let's see how much, if at all, he wants to commit to this. Looks like he's just hoping for a straggler. Not going to find any. As Cupad wisely has moved under their own tower. They, of course, do have wards down, so they most likely saw him grab that haste rune. No, he's on the way. And Havost has joined with Phonic now in the jungle. There's the haste room pop. Yep, they're going to engage back on select. There's the silence. Here come the ice shards. And yeah, there, that used to be a Magnus. I'm not sure what happened to him. He just kind of melted. Wow, that's some ridiculous burst from those two heroes. Yeah. Just a bit. Okay, we're nine minutes in, Merlini. Things are obviously getting out of control for Q-Pad again. Let, let's put you in the captain's chair. You're in Q-Pad's captain's chair. Obviously, you don't want JRX to die. And yep, he will be able to make it away. But what's your plan? How do you get this game back on track? They really just need to make use of this Nyx pick. He was their free farmer, he was their solower, and he got all the XP and space in the world. And now he is on him to make things happen. And it looks like Mini might die in middle. Oh, no. Good return kill. The shards look to have Mini locked in, but the uh, Tusk getting a little ahead of himself got out of position. Tusk, you're not quite high enough level to do that. Finally, we see Q-Pad. Get on the board. Tusk is just short of level 5, but tell you what's nuts, man. Our last game, game 1, went about 12 minutes. This one is already just about 10 in. That's the first kill we've seen Q-Pad have all day. Yep, they're on the scoreboard. <laughs> He's not, not a goose egg, at the very least, but... 10 minutes in, 3-1. to one. Navi maintains their lead. We can look at the gold. See, they are ahead considerably, at least for this stage of the game. 2,000 ahead, just about 1,500. Experience in their favor, so they are beginning to open that chasm there. Back to Sing Sing. I mean, at this point, Sing is level six, so he's not just monstrously behind. He has his boots to travel. What's your plan if you're Sing Sing? How best do you contribute to this game plan of Q-Pad? Hang on, we're gonna see a Vos caught out with a mana burn that was preceded by an impale. Q-Pad's there. Hook is not ready, so they're gonna be unable to track him down. Just so hard to kill an alchemist who's over leveled. Wow, that is the second time that JRX has missed his vendetta before the impale. Mm -hmm. Wasting a lot of damage. Mm. But yeah, uh, Sing is finally level 6, which is actually pretty big, uh, considering this really unlucky Seder spawn. That, that creep spawn is still there, 10 minutes in, and they don't really <laughs> have the damage to take it out. Maybe uh, Select can take it out with a couple of uh, Shockwaves, but I don't really know what they were going for with the neutral, non-ancient Ting Tinker. But again, Sing has recovered pretty decently, and it looks like they will actually finally 
uh, be able to get some map control with that. GRX has Vendetta up in four seconds. And I don't think we've seen a Vendetta kill yet. No. The only one was them just a tower diving middle. Yeah, I mean, honestly, it's hey, I, I'm with you. You hate to point at a player and, and lay a lot of blame, but he was given a lot of emphasis with the way that they drafted and laned, and he's just not getting any use out of his skill set. I mean, like you said, he's leading off with Impale, and there's just no reason to. I mean, or if there is, it's one I'm unaware of. We're going to see ice shards thrown out. They come up a bit short, but we can just see. I mean, they're so scared whenever these heroes hook up in mid and before long. I think Navi, I mean, we already got level six on Puppy as well. So that means between that and Phonix Global Presence, they can be just about anywhere they want to be. Yeah, you have to give a lot of credit to Navi support. So they've had yeah. Sentry Wars in, like, in mid pretty much the whole entire game that Nyx has been six, and they had one up here earlier. And Alchemist is, again, very, very hard to kill. 1343 HP with his ultimate up. Looks like he's going for a kill on Puppy. Actually did it right that time. Mana Burns there. See? What a difference it makes whenever you get all that bonus damage. Javos now locked under his own tower. May have help on the way. Funna could get there if he wants to, but looks like he feels safe enough for the moment. JRX has enough mana for an impale. And yeah, Havosh is going to go ahead and bail out. In the meantime, we can see the rest of Navi putting pressure on the mid. Select trying to soak what experience he can. His level 8 does have an RP. Uh, but at the very least, Cube had, uh, you know, uh, it, it, this was the time in game one where they started to lose control. You started to see a lot of mistakes. They are playing much more stable and much more methodical this time around. Yep. Um, not much rune control on the side of Cube, though. Dendi has pretty much gotten every rune, and this is will be his second haste rune, I believe. And they will not drop uh, the Rasta Wars on top lane, so this tower will stay up if... Mm, yep, looks like they won't. I don't know. I don't really know why they uh, didn't use it though. They killed Puppy, so th without Caudal Blast, it should be an easy tower to take, and they really need that tower gold right now. They only have one down in bottom lane. Right now, both teams kind of stable, at least for the moment. And I'm a little surprised to see that Navi's not just really putting the pedal to the metal here. I mean, it's tough to do, again, because of the team they have. It's so much harder to play that style against a team that has a Magnus, has a Clockwork, so on and so forth. They just have so many ways to counter-initiate you and punish you if you decide to commit too much. And, you know, Kuro being the first kill that q pads notched all day got a good dose of that uh, whenever he rushed the high ground. Back to Sing Sing, still trying to make up a lot of ground here. We can see by the last hits, he is second. But an Alchemist with Midas is not the guy you want on top in terms of, wow, they're just going to go for it on JRX. The ulti was actually spent, and he's pretty much going to be forced back to the well now. And Clockwork's actually going to get a kill up at top, so we're going to see the wards go down. Here comes Tusk, reinitiating on the Waga, going to clean him up with a Walrus Punch. Select spots Puppy, but not going to commit to anything. Tusk in the meantime is giving the old end around. Now we're going to see a skewer that catches Phonic. So Q-Pad hooking up at the right time. The Sing Sing landed in just in time. Dindy has made his way up. Don't know what he can contribute, at least for the moment. Puppy barely survives the shockwave. Here come the Ice Shards. They want to re-engage. The going to be locked down and cleaned up. Dindy making use of that haste rune quite effectively. So they end up making that into a two for two, not too shabby. Mm, not bad at any means. Uh, still need RP from Magnus, so it's going to be a while until he gets his blink, but Navi is just really excellent with her positioning, not allowing even one hero to get caught by that. And we can see Avost has added the armlet to his inventory, and I mean, at this point, do you want to get active with that Alchemist Merlini, or do you decide to just sit back and free farm and play on that advantage? It looks like he's just going survivability just because all he needs to do is survive and farm. He, there's not really any pressure for them to fight right now just because they have two Midas's up and running already and because they have the better late game composition. So he doesn't actually need to do anything. If the fight comes to him, he'll take it. Uh, that's generally just how Havos plays and especially how Alchemist is. Again, with Goblin's Greed or Greedful's Greed as it is called now, the pressure's not really on your team to make anything happen. You just need to minimize deaths and try and farm it up. We're going to see Kuro, actually. I had the camera on that. Didn't commentate at all. In the meantime, JRX eats another ulti. Will be cleaned up by Arcane Bolt Puppies here as well. Magic damage out the Yin Yang. We're going to see the Illuminate come out and connect on Waga. We're going to see the Skewer to get select. Away Cogs did go down from Waga to try and put it into that fight. Looks like it was an effective countermeasure. So they end up trading one for one again. Nix Assassin traded for the Tusk. And that was actually a really funny engagement by Kuro. He threw out the ice shards and ice that snowballed behind it. But uh, the ice shards didn't connect, so he just kind of rolled and rolled and ended up cleaned up in no man's land. But before he did die, he turned around and threw out a walrus punch just for the hell of it. So either way, Q-Pad is making a game of it. It's 5-7. to seven. Na'Vi maintains the lead, at least in that regard.
The gold, though, continuing to move in their direction and much more handily. 4,000 to their advantage. The experience right in that same range. Dindy will be hexed and now ward trapped. Many dropping the ward. Should get himself a free kill, and they will. Very high value kill for them to pick up there. You have nice execution by many there, and it looks like they'll probably get a tower out of it. Puppy needs to come mid. It looks like he's about to start to have to blast. And we can see the Illuminate charge. Tower's still in very... Woo, that's a lot of damage, and he dies to the uh, March of the Machines. Ended up eating the rocket. So much damage from March of the Machines. Haven't talked a lot about Tinker's build. He has maxed the rockets and March, so he is doing a lot of damage in that AoE. But again, the problem, the liability, all the time they're doing this, they're not getting towers, and this big guy right here, or this little guy riding on the big guy, getting free farm. Radiant's top tower is under attack. Looks like Nyx doesn't want to pick him up, but they're going to have to hit a hook shot for this to work. And yeah, he actually didn't land that vendetta. They are going to hit the hook shot. But will it be enough? There's the ulti. And here comes Skywrath Mage dropping the ult. Didn't catch anything. RP going to be spent. They really want the Alchemist. They will be able to clean him up. In the meantime, Waga like to, likely to be traded. No likely to. It will be traded. At the very least, they do get him. In the meantime, the battle rages on. Kuro finds two targets. Will eat the Impale. Here comes Puppy. He's going to have Blinding Light to knock him back if he wants to use it in the meantime. Oh, he actually knocks him out of it. Here comes the Snowball, though. Will catch up, and a Walrus Punch sends him back to the well in a body bag. Nine to eight. Navi maintains their lead, but I really like the way Q-Pad is playing this. Sometimes the execution is there, sometimes it isn't. But at least they're not laying down and taking it. Now we're going to see the TPM by Funic. He's there to help clean that up with Dindy. 10 to 8. Navi counterpunching. Looks like they're going to try to take this tier 1 mid. Yeah, I'm actually a little bit scared for Q Banner right now. They don't have any sort of items on any hero except for uh, Tinker. <laughs> and Magnus is still quite a long ways away from his blink. And, I mean, let's just be honest. You know, I'm not gonna, you can't lay it on one person. JRX has really just not had a good game. And, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, my eyes deceived me. He actually missed on that last in, on uh, the last Vendetta there on the Alchemist. They cleaned him up anyway. But, you know, that little bit of extra time might have been all the time that Navi needed to get there. And he basically stutter-stepped the animation and uh, canceled it with an impale. So, I mean, he's got to continue. He's got to make sure he gets the mechanical things right at least. Right, they had to devote a lot more spells than they needed to yep. uh, because of that. I think that's the third time he's missed Impale, and usually you don't see players make that same mistake. Vonic gonna eat a hook from Waga, should be cleaned up and will be. As battery assault, enough to secure that kill. Didn't really have any help in range. In the meantime, select will be the return kill. And that's an exchange Navi will make any time. If they can leave Funic out the dry and instead get a Magnus, they're going to be okay with that. And I'll tell you what sucks for Mag. He is just nowhere near that. Well, that's a lie. He's got 800 gold, 750 gold. So, I mean, he's making progress. But imagine how much quicker that Blink Dagger would have been up if he just wasn't dying over and over here in mid. Yep. And meanwhile, Dendi already has his Atos, a 3,100 gold item. And Slight can't even get his 2,000 gold item. And, but they do get a tower on top, so a small break for Cubana. Should help put a dent into that gold lead. Let's take a look. And yeah, a dent's about the most you can say. And this is where things get scary. You know, whenever you see little blips up like that on the gold graph and on the experience graph, you know, if that's at 40 minutes, you understand. But whenever you're already beginning to feel like you're in a hole, and there we go, it does go ahead and round itself out a bit. In the meantime, looks like there's going to be a kill on Tinker. That's the kind of thing that they can have. Tinker really is their best great hope at this point. Having him picked off by a tusk because he's trying the jungle or trying to uh, solo the ancients, not really a mistake they can afford. Yep, he does have his blink dagger up, though. And keep in mind, this gold advantage is with a two-tower lead for mm -hmm. uh, Q Panda. Yep. Honestly, I mean, we just haven't seen Navi put a lot of pressure on towers. So, you know, looking at the way they're playing this, it seems like they're just trying to keep the to keep the uh, map for free for Havost. I mean, they're not really doing a whole lot except looking to apply pressure to force Q-Pad to, uh, to get together here in mid. And the whole time, I mean, every time I look at Havost, almost no one's near him unless it's a Nyx assassin who started stepping a vendetta. Yeah, I'd say Funic is actually playing very well, though. He isn't meant to split push. Oh. Dendi going to be caught out. He was carapace. There was a nice play. The RP was canceled there by select. So that's a very high value kill for them. That was that was well played. That makes up for one of the missed vendettas. He got the carapace out and time to stun out Dendi, who was way out of position, way too far forward. Now we're going to see the engagement on the Kuro from the low ground. He's going to be hexed and will be followed up. So Na'Vi given a dose of their own medicine. Yeah, nice carapace there by JRX, even if he is missing with the impales. That was a nice carapace on the frost shards to set up that kill. Mm -hmm. uh, but back to what I was saying, Funic has been playing pretty well. He doesn't actually need to... Oh, Puppy is going to die. What was Puppy doing there? I have no <laughs> he idea. had to know they were there. He just kind of walked out and ate everything in the face. 
Yeah, this might be Max Blingtagger, though. Already at 2,100 gold. Yep, he does have it right now. And we're going to see the wards go down again. Q-Pad getting themselves right back into this. And this is what I was talking about. You know, last time they kind of fell back and tried to play stable when they got behind. This time, now they're going to be able to catch the Alchemist. He's going to go ulti, pop the BKB. Mech going to be using. Here comes the mass TP reactions. We're going to see... Uh, Mini cleaned up. Now Walker gonna drop the cogs. He will eat the ult at the same time though <laughs> and somehow the Alchemist finds himself in the low ground in the Roche pit So he's able to get around him that way. They get two return kills. It cost them a tower But they do manage to counter punch in the meantime fun except the top looks like he wants to try and counter push He's got a shadow blade complete JRX is gonna go ahead and pursue this out. Let's see if he wants to engage fun it again half health again why? I mean, it worked out that time, but why would you not just use the Vendetta? Guess he was scared of the Shadow Blade, but he had to have, like, <laughs> ninja fast reflexes for that. 22 minutes in, Merlini. It looks pretty close in terms of the kills at the very least. Back to the gold graph, we can see. I mean, and this is good news if you're Q-Pad. I mean, again, in game one, they just kind of sat back and took it once they got behind. This time, they're putting a lot more pressure on, trying to make things happen on the map. Tell me what's key for them as we uh, roll past 20 minutes. This is exactly what q needs to do, or at least try and get <laughs> these kills on Dendi. Oh, is he going to die? Uh, yeah, so what they need to do is just pick off heroes that are alone and then force them a clump. And then once they force them a clump, they can hopefully hit big RPs and just spam them down with q and hmm. try and shut down their farm. Uh, they need to buy some dust so they can kill uh, Funnick now that he has a Shadow Blade and hopefully just regain control that way. That's the power of Nyx and Clock. And now we're going to have an engagement as we see Funnick will be hacked. Many is going to be locked in, eat the polar punch, and see you back at the well, brother. Managing to get a return kill, and now we're going to have JRX engaging. Should be able to clean him up, even use the dust that time. So another good return kill. I mean, right now, I, I'm really impressed with the Q-Pad's play. Na'Vi still very much in control of this game, don't get me wrong. But they it's such a different look from what we saw them doing in Game 1. They're finally putting their lineups through their uh, through their paces. Yep, most definitely. And we still see Havos very, very rich. He picks up a hyper zone, looks like, and his net worth is 12,300, almost 4,000 ahead of next highest, which is Tinker. Three of the top four, all belonging to Navi. And that's really the scary thing. And that's that, you know, that's the big sticking point of why Navi is a little bit further ahead than they seem to be. And it comes back to what we talked about during the draft. There's just no one on the side of QPAD who can hang and bang with an alchemist in the late game. So Na'Vi, at any point, has the option of just turtling it out and letting the superior GPM. Speaking of GPM, I mean, yeah, he's more than 200, uh, 200 GPM ahead of anyone on the map, including Tinker, which is rare. So, I mean, rare even for an Alchemist, but, you know, Midas certainly helps out with that. But, yeah, I mean, at some point, he's going to start showing up for fights. And if you're Q-Pad, how do you cope with that? Luckily, they do have a lot of souls that go through BKB. Oh, he missed the Vendetta again! And Funic likely to be cleaned up here, but they had to spend the wards even. And again, this is the problem. Now, if Navi wants to re-engage, and they will get a kill on the clockwork in the meantime, I'd actually be shocked if they don't try to re-engage here. And we can see he's making a run for it. Blink Dagger has been picked up by the Shadow Shaman, so the mobility build on Q-Pad, definitely the order of the day. But yeah, I mean, it's... I mean, mechanical mistakes at this level against this level of competition. And, and again, the last couple of times we've griped about it, it hasn't been the difference maker because he's had help. But still, why? Mm. But at least q -Panda is picking up kills. This is exactly what they need to do with their Nyx and with their clockwork. So they're getting these solo kills on heroes that are trying to split push and be away from their team. And now they're kind of forced Na'Vi to clump. We see four of them together right now. And I wouldn't be surprised if they continue this. Uh, but again, if you have four four people, what are you going to do versus a Tinker versus a Magnus with Blink? They're going to have a really hard time pushing this T1, I believe. They're just going to go for it. There's the Glyph TP reactions are there. He's going to BKB and just go for it. Trying to engage on JRX. There's the Ice Shards thrown out. And they're able to clean him up with no muss or fuss. RP, ooh, good cancel select. Almost blew it, but now he's silenced. That's the problem. Now that he's down, what do they do? We're going to see Funnick go ahead, raise some treants after the Sprout. They're trying to hold, and they can hold at least a little longer on the back of Sing Sing, but doesn't have a bottomless mana pool yet. And Magnus dropping, I mean, they have to have execution out of him and out of Walker. Walker, for the most part, has played a real good game at Dota. Select again, though, seems to continue to struggle. All right, and JRX, I have no idea what he was doing <laughs> over there, too. They have a Sentry Ward right here. He didn't even pop Vendetta, but even if he had, there was no escape. 
escape room for him. Um, they're just going to rush through this. There's the snowball going to connect on many. They're going to engage. He had someone aboard. And that was the Alchemist. they got to get out of that, or at least Tusk does. Tusk will be able to make it away. And yeah, they do take a tier one. In the meantime, Phonic has bounced down to bottom. He's got almost 2,000 gold in his inventory. And I actually thought he was going to split push. Looks like not going to be the case. Yeah, there's no way that Select can hesitate with these RPs, though. As we saw, he canceled his and then immediately silenced by Skywrath, and he's just going to be focused down by the team. So he really has to uh, just blink in RP. We haven't seen the game-changing mag that we have seen a lot of the time, yep. and uh, they really need big RPs if they want to defend these towers. Net worth getting a little out of control. We're, all, we're just 27 minutes in. And, you know, we're talking about a 7,000 gold net worth lead now for Havos. He's got his BKB. A full Assault Curus is done at 27 minutes to go with that armlet. So, I mean, at this point, how do you build him? I mean, you're rich beyond your wildest dreams. You've already got up your AC. What's your build here, Berlini? Uh, Q-Panda doesn't have any damage. He can just go tanky build. He doesn't actually need to go um, damage. Looks like he's going just like a ton of armor and a ton of survivability. And that's pretty much how you should build them. They have like very long sustained damage in the form of uh, Tinker, Marsh, Tinker, uh, Tinker Rockets. But in terms of actual like physical damage from like a late game carry, we don't see that. And that was right. a problem with their draft as you pointed out earlier. So they're, they're going to have a really hard time killing him, especially now that he has... Uh, BKB and 25 armor and most more likely than not Navi will take out Roshan pretty soon So they're gonna have to deal with that Aegis as well. Although I don't know if they'll give it to Alchemist I don't think he's gonna die in these fights Looks like they're rattling their saber towards that bottom lane profit is still in mid though We see Alchemist has arrived via puppy airlines and 19 to 16 we're coming up on 30 minutes Q pad at least was able to slow the bleeding if not stop it entirely, but I believe we're about to see just how strong this lineup from Navi can be. He's actually hitting really hard even without building pure damage just because of the armlet. And yep, here we go. Unstable concoction. He's going to chase down midship. Or excuse me, many. I did it there. And he's cleaned up very easily. Eye shards are out. Now we're going to see the hook comes in. Catches Puppy. Puppy able to use Blinding Light to get out of trouble. There's Skyrat Salty and the Walrus Punch. Enough to add another kill to the total. Dindy has eaten. There's a good RP from Select. That's what they had to have. Now it's just a question of, is, of if they can clean up the Alchemist. I don't know that they can. Forced to blink away and retreat. JRX going to eat the unstable concoction. Ulti is off. And yeah, one shockwave will be enough. So good defense, and they end up losing two. But they got three in exchange for it. Yeah, that was actually a pretty crucial fight for Cuban. Uh, Tusk picked up a gem, but he ended up dying and dropping it. And I believe Nyx has it right now. Mm -hmm. Huge turnaround for them. And Tinker's very close to Sheep. He has 3,500 gold, just, so just 100 more gold until he has that Perma Sheep. They have what they had to have there. Select had to get some targets, had to hit, you know, it's one thing to, you know, yes, five-man RPs are always the goal if you can make it happen, but generally speaking, against a professional team, you'll be lucky to get two or three. And, if, you know, mm -hmm. being able to get the two that he got there, being able to lock the Alchemist down there, very, very important. If they can, 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 can continue to shore up his play, I think they're going to be all right, at least for the, for the near term. But again, the same problem exists that we had discussed which is, where do they go once Alchemist just, you know, Alchemist is going to be tanky enough at some point, and he will start to build damage. How do you cope with him then? Pretty much just Permahex. Yeah. Uh, they seem to kill him pretty easily there, but that was after his ult wore off. Havos needs to be a little bit careful about that so he doesn't die. Looks like they're going to look for this kill with a the smoke. There you go. There's the blink in the Hex. Oh, he missed with the War Trap. However, Vandetta was used correctly that time, so they do get the kill. And... This is a good example. They should be able to get a... Nope, never mind. Many will be cleaned up. The Nyx at least gets away. But nope, never mind. Funix there. The ulti's there from the Skywrath Mage as well. So they're able to go two for one. This looks to be the mark to do Roche. Yep, and it looks like they actually killed the gem, surprisingly. But yeah, you know, right there in mid, the fact that, you know, they did end up getting a couple of return kills. But just landing the Vendetta, being able to bring down their target that much quicker almost allowed them to get away so proof of concept in action 23 to 20 43 kills in a game that's only taken 30 minutes been a very very active game so far the gold nearing that five digit mark in favor of navi they're just north of 10,000, and same thing in terms of experience and Dendi already has his BKB, and they opted to give him the ages over Havos. Again, Havos really shouldn't die in these fights. He's so right. tanky right now. He has 3,200 HP with Armlet and uh, 
chemical rage on, and he has that BKB. He's extremely difficult to kill, and really there's no uh, reason for him to die unless he overextends. Taking a look at the various items across the board, Magnus has picked up an Oblivion staff on his way to a refresher. Kuro on the other side, drums, and eh, basic support stuff did add phase boots quite some time ago. Puppy's been working on this mech forever. I'm actually surprised it's not done yet. I meant to call it out a couple of times and had action interrupt me, but he's been short of it just uh, for literally about the last eight minutes or so. Having the buckler and the headdress, looks like we may have another breakout of aggression here on bottom. Yep, they're going to engage right on the Kuro. Eats the Vendetta. They will be cleaned up. Now, Navi will go ahead and re-engage. Many going to be blown up immediately. Carapace is there. Here comes the damage from Sing Sing on the backside. We're going to see all oh, locks him in with Waga. That's not the guy you want to be locked in with most of the time. In the meantime, Keeper of the Line and Phonic have to pull back a little bit all the way up under the tower to stay safe. Just so much damage they were eating. And Waga, yep, will be cleaned up from downtown via the Arcane Bolt from Dindy. In the meantime, the battle rages on. As we can see, Havos going for it under the tower. He's now surrounded by nothing but enemies. Should be cleaned up and will, yep, be cleaned up. The Aegis was not lost by Dindy, but they do lose Havos. In the meantime, though, the other lanes are pushing quite hard. In general, teams don't want to push versus a Tinker, especially one as stacked as Singh is, and this is why. you They were they were over here, and if you want to stand over here, you're just going to get picked up by the other heroes. Hmm. But if you push up through lane, you're going to get spammed down by March and uh, March and Rocket. And actually, Havos doesn't seem like he's thinking enough. It looks like he probably is going for Heart next. Yep, I see him just by the recipe. So he's just going uh, straight survivability. Again, he doesn't really need too much damage. He has a lot of minus armor with his acid spray and with AC, so he can get a lot of damage output from that and Funnick will actually have a sheep pretty soon but they're continuing this pressure on bottom and seeing will be there to likely spam out March and Rocket very shortly. Well if anything what Navi's accomplishing here is choking him out. I mean you're you're forcing them all to be up under this tower and ready to fight. I mean we can see the Nyx assassins all the way across the map. He's got a TP so he can get there if he needs to. But the global presence of Navi is so much more potent because of nature's profit and because of Puppy's ability to teleport heroes to him. So, I mean, just being able to force them to group up here, and this plays back into what we had talked about. They've done an admirable job of at least keeping this game together. But when you look at the experience graph and the gold graph, you know, the gold's leveled out at about 10,000. The experience is ticked up temporarily. But the loss of experience and levels, I feel like, hurts Q-Pad a lot more than it hurts Navi when they group up like this. And we will see a smoke. And, yep, Puppy brings in Alchemist. They spot out the March of the Machines. Navi going to go ahead and end around. They're going to find Waga. Sigil's up. And Waga throws out the rocket, so he should see what's going on. Puppy is still under cover of smoke. Not anymore. And the ward's going down. There's the ice shards thrown out. They've got him up under the tower. And now looking to collapse. Here we go. They're going to go on Waga. Waga going to eat the polar punch. Might end up cleaned up. Mini taking a lot of damage as well. He's going to eat the unstable concoction. Good RP, though. Going to lock three down. Is it enough? Can they have the follow-up damage? They're going to be able to not quite clean one up. Dindy still has the eight. Just keep that in mind. Select did his job. Now he's down. JRX now the next target. Sing still up. But they're fighting through this March of the Machines quite well. So they do end up getting the big win they've been looking for for a while. It cost them Puppy that time. But they end up getting four. They're going to get a tier one. They might get a tier two. Yeah, very smart play by Navi. They're going back behind the tower. And again, uh, the couple of times they tried to push before, they just tried to go through lane and just ran into March of Rockets. But coming from behind with that smoke was very, very effective. Mm -hmm. We can see Tinker has bounced up the to top. Sing Sing just doing what he can. Has his own sheep stick up. But really, I mean, with 30 seconds respawn on Mag and he wouldn't even have RP, don't know that they can save this Tier 2 tower. Now, this is where things have to really start to be worrisome. You, you have a Tinker, you want to try and take map control in the back of his inherent mobility. But if they start to lose map control, this lineup of Navi can just strangle them. Yep, and this Sheep on Funding is going to be a lot of trouble for them. There goes the Tier 2. Alchemist getting the last hit there. Net worth. Tinker's actually held, uh, towed the line. He's held the line fairly well in terms of the net worth gap. It's been a 7,000 for a while now. But anyway, 35 minutes into this game, and Navi continues to build on that lead. The gold now nearing 14,000 to their advantage. The experience once again turning southward quite sharply. Alchemist is such a beast right now. 3471 HP without his ultimate. And how do you kill him? especially without any physical damage. Not that physical damage wouldn't be that useful because just because he has so much armor. And JRX looks like he actually misses the stun on uh, Funnick, and Funnick will get away even though he's dusted. 
And we can see Sing Sing hooks up within the rest of Navi is moving in that general direction. Looking for a pick and Phonix there with the sheep stick. And all of a sudden Sing Sing now sprouted in. He's going to be counter hexed. And Sing Sing maybe hanging around a bit too long. There's a hook from Waka though to re-engage. Here we go. JRX going to be caught out. Waka drops the cogs. Phonix still up and alive. Tinker blink blinked into the tree so he survived as well. But Navi hooking up. And now, perhaps looking to make something happen in this top lane. We can see Select is down in bottom lane. He has a TP, has his uh, RP ready if they want to try and contest this. And we'll see how, yep, he is going to go ahead and be TPing in. Very important fight for QPAD. Don't know that they can yeah. keep the tower up, but if they engage, they got to win. Yeah, that was a very clutch escape by Sing Sing there. He would have definitely had a buyback order that would have cost him a Rex. So, very nice play by him to be able to escape in that situation. Looks like they actually were able to ward them off, and that's just the power of March of the Machines. Even when you're this far behind, March is just so damn impossible to push into, and they don't have the option of going around it in top lane like they did in bottom. And it looks like uh, Havos is almost 6 lot. He's gonna He can sell his Midas for something, but he's already sitting at 3,600 gold. I wonder what he's going to get next. I mean, and again, that's kind of what I was asking. At some point, he's going to be like, okay, I'm fat enough now. You know, like you said, with the armlet toggled, he's at 3,500 freaking hit points with a billion armor. So at this yeah. point, does he just go damage? I would say Mjolnir at this point. Yep. And we'll see a smoke from Navi. Smoking up in mid. Phonic under cover of his shadow blade down in the jungle looking for a target. Looks like they're going to go ahead and make their way south. Roche will be back up in about three or four minutes. And that might be the game plan. Smoke, take control of the jungle, try to get a pick that's fortuitously timed, get in position, and look to take another Aegis before you push to win. Puppy unable to find a target as he dips down into the westernmost side of the jungle. Now they're just going to hook back up with Funix, so they may actually look to push a tier 3 here. Select cannot die right now. He yep. just bought his refresher. If he dies, it's game over. Right. But he can make things happen, especially with two RPs. He's very, very important right now. And Navi, not revealing themselves in Toto, they are just going to go ahead and back here. So yeah, playing very cautiously. I would say that that's, you know, you could take that as an indicator that Roshan is probably the big goal at the moment. Mm, still a good two minutes until Roshan, though. And they are going to go ahead and back back out. Dindy dips in, says, nope, not respawned yet. Don't worry about it, bro. Dindy is working on a Shiva's of his own. And yeah, I mean, Dindy's, I mean, we haven't talked a whole lot about him just because it's flashy spells. We haven't focused a lot on his item build. But getting up that Ato certainly tanked him up, gave him the mana pool he needed. He's got the Shivas on the way. And he's actually going to start to feel pretty tanky himself, I would say. Now we're going to see a hook popped on Funnick. He does have the BKB up. And doing some good damage in the meantime. Going to go ahead and use Sprout. The ward trap didn't work. Just hurt. Did I just hear an RP? I did. And yeah, JRX. Yeah, I'm not even sure how he got uh, over I don't know what he RP'd, but yeah, I, I, I heard it. I, there he is. Okay. I have no idea what he was doing. I, I thought he engaged down here into this group of heroes. I just heard the heard the ability. I have no idea what just happened. <laughs> yeah, I was watching Funnick die there. But anyway, select. Pull on the trigger quick. He's got the refresher. But in the meantime, Roche just about 70 seconds away. And looks like Navi forgot to write down the time because they keep checking in. They know it's sometime soon. They just don't know exactly <laughs> when. But uh, anyway, it's 24 to 29. The game remains very active. That experience of gold lead, though, beginning to feel a little on the insurmountable side. Yep. All they need to do is kill Tinker and hopefully not get five man RP. I think they can uh, take it once they get the Aegis. All right, so, I mean, we're at 40 minutes. We still got Dota to play. I'm going to put you back in the captain's chair. This time I'm putting you in Navi's captain's chair. What's the game plan to close this game out? What they need to do is either try and get a sheep on the Tinker or the Magnus and then just BKB Zerg him down with Alchemist. But hopefully all that will happen once he gets to Aegis. And even if things go very, very poorly, they can just bait out double RP, buyback, recall in, or just Fury on TP in, and then hopefully just brute force with... Uh, probably like seven or eight lines. And here we go. We're going to see him engage. Kuro in trouble. There's the hook. Good shot from Waga. Waga has played very well this game. Select will be cleaned up after being silenced, though, and Dindy just man-moding it with his BKB surrounded by enemies. Here comes the big boy, though. Going to go ahead and throw it out on Mini. Mini bailed out by his buddies. Here come the shards again. Waga has blade mail up, doing what damage he can. In the meantime, Alchemist being chain hex. They've got to get the damage done, though. Here comes Funic. Funic looks to re-engage. JRX pops the carapace. Doesn't matter when BKBs are in the mix, though. Funic trying to right-click and do what damage he can. Unable to do much of anything. But in the end, again, Navi, even though they were forced to buy back on Kuro, 
takes a win when they needed it the most. And, you know, at this point, especially with the damage output that an Alchemist is going to have, they're going to take this Roshan basically as soon as I finish this sentence. Yeah, man, we see an Abyssal pick up an Alchemist. So yep. there is the damage. He sits around 360 damage with his ultimate up. And That's wow. going to be very, very painful to deal with. Seeing actually picked up an Ethereal Blade. I don't know that I've ever seen an Ethereal Blade on a Tinker in a competitive game. Yeah, the Ghost Scepter is really good here, especially versus the BKBs. They can't really do anything against Nature's Prophet or Alchemist during BKB unless they want to blow RP on them. Mm -hmm. um, but pretty good item. Unfortunately, he does not have a DAG on a combo, but he's still very rich. 3,600 gold on the bank. The net worth, again, you got to give Sing Sing credit here. This game has slip sliding away from QPAD, but Sing Sing has kept up with farm with the Alchemist about as well as he possibly could have. And I mean, what more can you ask whenever you're up against an Alchemist? Just being able to break even, even if you are behind from the beginning, certainly deserving of a little bit of admiration. We can see and when we look at the kill death, 14 and 3, obviously the leader is Dendi there. The mass damage, mass spam ability of Skywrath showing itself. 7 and 10 on our Shadow Shaman, so he's been plenty active. 6 and 1, a very strong performance out of the Sing Sing, despite having a bad start. Kuro's been active, 6 and 7, so he's died as many, as many times as he's uh, gotten kills and just kind of a grab bag after that. I mean, 42 minutes in, right now, to be honest, I feel like one of the big reasons that Q-Pad remains in this game is Wagamama. Mm -hmm. And Sing Sing. Well, as you mentioned Sing Sing, but Sing Sing has been playing out of his mind this game. He's yep. been playing exceptionally well. Very much agree. Very much agree. And here we go. They rush the Tier 3. Ulti is up. They've got the BKB on, on uh, Dendi. And here we go. They're going to go for it with the big snowball. It's going to be a... Oh, nice! RP immediately follows it up from Select. He follows it up a second time. Aegis is popped, and the Alchemist is up and chopping away. Able to clean one up. Just too much damage. Select, who has struggled so much, did everything he could. But they end up getting a couple of kills. Now they should be forced out, though. And Dendi will be shackled in, so QPAT loses the Tier 3, but they're able to extend the game at the very least. The JRX is cleaned up by Puppy. The Hex, though, should seal his fate, and it does. 34 to 30. QPAD keeps this game alive, but, you know, we talked a bit about the struggles of Select in the early game. He had a real bad game one. He did everything he possibly could there, and that's exactly why they had a chance to keep this game extended. Mm-hmm. And Kiro just pretty much just set him up for that, though. He <laughs> snowballed three people in. I uh, would see Funic pick up a Diffusal Blade, most likely to Diffusal the Ghost Scepter hmm. off whoever Tinker decides to Ethereal Blade, whether it be one of his allies or uh, himself boss. 64 kills on the board. It's a fairly even split. Taking a look at the goal graph. Despite that win there for QPAD, the goal and experience continue. And it looks like QPAD lives to fight, lives to see another day. And uh, Sing did not die either. He's still sitting on very nice gold. Mm. Yep. And Sing has actually been managing his gold very well. He always has enough gold for buyback, and he's still keeping up with the Alchemist in terms of items. And the net worth is only six thousand. That was, um, I think, seven thousand, as you said a little while back. But oh, are they going to pick off Funic here? Yep. Funic engaged upon. He's got his BKB up, and he does use Shadow Blade. TP will be enough. So unable to clean him up despite a very well shot hook by Wog. And that's what I'm talking about. I mean, like you said, Sing Sing has been playing a phenomenal game of Dota. But Waga, I mean, he's just been getting the targets he really needs to get, has not been making a lot of mistakes. Sing Sing's bailed himself out with a lot of personal and individual performance uh, despite getting himself into trouble here and there. But, I mean, Navi's just been in control. I still think Q-Pad has looked really good hanging on to this game, no matter what the scoreboard says. And now we're going to have an engagement. Puppy blown up immediately. Wards are down. Just heard Waga shoot a hook. And will be cleaned up by Funic. Oh, no, hang on. He's actually stunned by the carapace. Now the RP is going to be blown on Alchemist. Alchemist is just so big. Almost 5,000 HP. Dendi re-engaging. JRX has no hope. Polar Punch is there. Now the Skewer going to catch the Alchemist again. He was shackled, but it just doesn't matter. Buyback out of Sing Sing. Now he's using that damage, using the Ethereal Blade and the Dagon that's freshly picked up. Dindy trying to pursue him out, unable to get the kill. But, uh, yeah, Fonic actually was in a little bit of trouble there if it weren't for the fact that the rest of his team held their attention. He used his ulti to try and kill off, uh, kill off the Tinker he was cogged in with, and Nyx happened to have his carapace up, so it had stunned him. As it stands, though, 
Navi takes a win and takes the last remaining outer tier tower. Yep, and now they have a small window to take a Rax down. Now that they finally force a buyback out of Sing, only his second death of the game. Mm -hmm. That uh, net worth getting a bit out of control, and Magnus wisely blinks out of uh, out of range there. We're gonna see Havosius go for it. There's the F blade. Now they're gonna follow it up. Ice shards are there. Sing Sing's trapped. Gonna be blown up. Got hit with everything at once. Very good hacks. Followed up with the ulti. Dindy though might be in trouble. He's very low. Kuro re-engages onto many. There's the hook to clean him up from Waga. Kuro does secure the kill. Wow, he got cogged out of his own shards. Bailed out there. And there's an RP spent. That's going to be enough to clean up Phonic. And Havo still standing, at least for the moment. Let's see if he wants to fight. No, he's actually going to eat the impale. There's some ice shards. Doesn't really help. Mech going to be used. And Q-Pad trying to make something happen. However, Navi with buybacks and that global presence once again. Getting themselves back into the fight admirably. Kuro throws out the ice shards, misses to the south. The select is able to blink away. He's the only one still standing. And he's picked up a BKB of his own. Don't think it's going to matter, though. As we see, the racks here in mid drop. They'll most likely rotate the top. And what has been an admirable, um, admirable performance from Q-Pad still looks like going to end with a loss. Yep. Gold difference is just way too much at this point. Twenty-five thousand, probably just a little over twenty thousand before um, that. Those two racks went down. Forty-seven minutes, and we're gonna see the respawn soon. But yeah, Megas are gonna be out now, and there's just nothing poor Select can do. Select got it together towards. Oh wow! Actually, pops the BKB. He's gonna skewer back of Oast and force the BKB to be popped. They're trying to keep him in the well, just unable to do so. And he is just chopping wood now on Waga. And now we're gonna see the hex as well as the ward trap from many freshly respawned. Here comes the ice shards again. In the meantime, the rest of the team did clean up the racks, so they might get Havos. Don't know that it's gonna matter in the end. And Kuro should be cleaned up as well and will be. Havos did buy back, but yeah, it's Mega Creeps. And now, Hex, gonna catch Havos once again. I mean, they're getting the kills, but the damage already a smidge done. Don't know that they're gonna have much of a chance to really make the most of this whenever they have Mega Creeps pushing their base the entire rest of the game. Yep. It's gonna be a long road if they wanna win from this. But I mean, Alf doesn't have buyback. Maybe they can try and do something. Again, they don't have any Physical damage though. No gyro with rapier to defend the resistant one or yep. super stacked PL. And <laughs> that means you gotta gotta admire it. They're hanging in. Take a look at Funic. He's got a, a trust fund. Three of the top four farmers all belong to Navi. And yeah, I mean still yet though. Worth mentioning, Sing Sing has kept it. He, basically, Sing Sing's been 7, 7,500 gold behind Havos for the last 25 minutes or so, so not bad, Dindy, <laughs> given the old epic, epic game call. Right, and this is kind of what we expected from Q Panda. They had, they drafted a really early game lineup, early mid game lineup, and like this late game phase where they just get heavily outfarmed by Alchemist with the People's Greed, yep. and a nature's profit with Midas is where all that comes into play, and they can't really hold up late game with only Tinker as a damage dealer. Hook gonna be off the mark, now we're gonna see many caught in no man's land and punish. Here comes Tusk using the snowball, Funic uses the hex just to secure the kill. And Walrus Punch. Everybody loves Tusk just because of the text that pops up whenever you use his ulti. I'm convinced of it, that's why anyone plays him. <laughs> it does look pretty cool. It's that comic book text, dude. But, uh, all right, here's some trivia for you. If Rubik steals, if, uh, if, uh, oh, it looks like they are going to be closing this out. If Rubik steals, uh, Tusk's, uh, walrus punch and uses it on Tusk, what's the text say? I wish I knew. It says sucker punch. Sucker punch. And if I'm not mistaken, if he uses it, yeah, if Tusk uses it on a creep, I think it says penguin punch. But anyway. <laughs> Looks like Sing Sing looking for revenge. Gets a kill or two. Gotta go ahead and use the F plate. But with the Megas knocking at the door. And Tinker dying again. That'll be that. So, a 50 minute game reaches its conclusion. With Navi as the winners. Game one went behind us in just 12 minutes. QPAD made a game of it in game two. But Navi. Extends their run here in the opening best of three series of the Curse Invitational. I'm EC, joined by Merlini. Merlini, recap the series for me, man. Tell me what went wrong for QPAD in both games. 
Uh, so first game, they just didn't have any sort of rotation and didn't have any response to Na'Vi's dominating early game presence. And it was a 12-minute GGA, I think, with 11-0 and no kills for them. So pretty much just, I think, a poor draft and poor movement by them. And then the second game, they didn't really have the early mid game that they wanted. Nyx didn't really uh, capitalize on his very fast level 6 and very fast arcane boots. And Tinker had a little bit of a slow start. Uh, but they didn't have any late game insurance, it's just Tinker, and once he gets one buyback down, what else are you going to do? 50 minutes of time it took for Na'Vi to seal the deal here in Game 2 and put our first series behind us. Going to go ahead and flash you to the bracket. With that down, Na'Vi will await the winners of Dignitas and Evil Geniuses.